good afternoon, everyone. Back from lunch. Uh, this better be interesting uh, to keep you guys awake. Anyway, so the topic for this panel, uh, M-commerce versus e-commerce. So at Intel Capital, we have been investing in the internet space for a while now. We have about 10 or 12 investments in that space, both in e-commerce, uh, the old age companies, if you remember, one to three greetings, uh, as well as M-commerce, which is uh, something like a PTM. Um, and so we certainly are confused, you know, uh, on a bunch of different uh, aspects of this debate. So I'm looking forward as much as any of you are today to learn from these guys because they represent uh, really what's going on in the industry. Uh, Flipkart obviously um, started from e-commerce. We'll get their perspective. Um, and then Free Church, um, again, uh, a very mobile-centric play. So uh, the idea here today is to get the real scoop on this debate. and get into real numbers, uh, and hopefully they'll be able to share that with us. Um, so with that, why don't we start, uh, if you can just do a couple minutes, quick introduction, yourself, your company, and then we'll get into the topic. So I'm Awesome Bhatt. Uh, I look after mobile commerce and digital marketing at uh, Flipkart. I've been with the company for about a couple of years, and I've you know, seen this phenomenal uh, growth in, in mobile commerce in the country. Um, and look forward to interacting with everyone. Uh, hi, this is Kunal. Uh, I founded Feature uh, almost five years ago now and uh, pretty excited about the mobile journey that has just begun or, or pretty much demolishing uh, the desktop uh, journey today. 90% uh, of our transactions happen on mobile. Uh, this was exactly the opposite last year. Uh, so I'm actually pretty surprised that it's still called e-commerce versus m-commerce. I, I think e-commerce is already m-commerce and there is a new animal called d-commerce, which is the dying commerce of desktop commerce. So, uh, uh, and, and I think uh, very soon the uh, name of the forums will start changing and start not differentiating between m and e anymore. Hi, uh, this is Alok from Mexico. Um, we started out in 2007 as a desktop only site and uh, today we get 73% or more of our traffic from mobile. Uh, actually, uh, we keep having debates on whether we should shut down the desktop someday or not. Uh, so I, I'm with you on the dying commerce. <laughs> um, we <coughs> I, I think this panel is very interesting because uh, you know, we are at a very interesting point in, in India's journey towards mobile adoption, where I think, uh, you know, the next 18 months, we're going to add as many mobile users as we did in the last three and a half years, right? So, you know, and, and when we're expanding at that pace, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a question not of mobile only or mobile first, but we should only talk about mobile in all the forums and maybe next time we should call this the M-commerce uh, uh, forum instead of the e-commerce forum because that's the only thing that'll make sense. Excellent. Um, so why don't we start with defining what you guys mean by e-commerce because uh, I think everyone has slightly different <laughs> definitions. Um, so before our discussion earlier, uh, you know, my definition of e-commerce was uh, when you do transaction using a mobile device that could be a smartphone, could be a tablet, could be whatever, but not um, a desktop, right? Is that your understanding or is it different? I think pretty much, I think, you, you know, any transaction that happens via a mobile device, you know, I think you, you, you can put tablet into that context, but I think given um, the Indian market, it's mostly about smartphones and, you know, large smartphones which are tablets. So I think, uh, unlike a lot of other countries, I think the tablet market is still fa fairly nascent in India and it may not even develop going, you know, how things are going. <laughs> Uh, so I think anything that is uh, any any portable device which is internet enabled with a SIM card, you know, is is the e-commerce market or the mobile commerce market. My my view is uh, I think there is a. It's not really uh, m-commerce or e-commerce. I think it's the age group of people uh, that are still stuck to wanting to have a keyboard to do things in life, and there are guys who are very happy with a touch screen, right? And and I I call it that the 
there is an uncle generation, I call it, right? and I'm part of that generation, uh, uh, which, which still feels comfortable with, you know, I, I still feel comfortable typing my important emails on a uh, laptop. Uh, I still carry my laptop mostly, which is charging my smartphone uh, by a cable. And, and, uh, and there is this new generation which is not using the smartphone in the same way. They, they don't operate it this way. They operate it you know, this way. And, and, and they are having no uh, bias towards having a desktop experience at all. One, one interesting fact is, in fact, I'm very curious to know, how many of you have bought a product on mobile or a service on mobile in the last 30 days? Okay. And how many of you use uh, desktop in the last 30 days to buy something? Desktop means yeah. laptop included? Uh, laptop included, sorry. Uh, anything which has a keyboard, right? <laughs> so th this, this is already showing the, the <coughs> shift. Uh, the majority of that was mobile hand raised over here. Uh, and, this is not the generation that we are serving, right? A lot of people who are coming now are very young. He's calling you uncles and aunties, by the way. It's, so it's important to that we realize that we are uncles over here running businesses because uh, uh, it's, it's not cool to have an uncle-looking app, an uncle-looking site, uh, uh, because this new generation is of, uh, in, 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 interacting with products like Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook at the same time as they're interacting with Indian products, and they can see the difference of quality, right? And therefore it is important to differentiate and call that an uncle or a cool product or not. And therefore it is important to keep pushing ourselves and not have our biases around how a product should be made. So your definition is a smartphone, not even a tablet? Absolutely. Okay. Hello? I think it's largely smartphone in India. You know, tablet penetration isn't anywhere close, nor, nor am I seeing any growth in tablet penetration uh, from an overall uh, transactional standpoint. I think one, one more thing to add to what Kunal said, uh, the demographics of the audience is changing as a result of mobile, right? So, you know, when you look at who these mobile users are, uh, you know, and when he says uncles, you know, it's because most of the people in this room would have grown up on desktop, right? And if you ask, you know, your plumber, your driver, your electrician, or, uh, you know, your maid who just bought a new, new smartphone, for her, the internet means that small screen, right? And she's not ever going to use anything else uh, in her life, most likely, right? And, 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 and when people grow up on that, you know, that demographic is very different. It's not just about uh, the age group, but also about uh, who these people are, what strata of society are they being added from. And, and that's what's changing fundamentally the whole landscape for all of us here. By the way, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and we'll take them as we go along. Um, so let's get to actual numbers uh, as much as you can share. Um, what, what percentage of your traffic and what percentage of your transactions are what you would call mobile? Um, about like a year and a half ago that number was about like 10% or less than 10%. Now that number is like 70% or more. So pretty much there's been a you know, dramatic shift and, uh, and this is not an, a huge portion of that 70% is also, you know, you know, based on app traffic. So it's not al also mobile sites. So I think people are clearly kind of showing a preference towards, you know, people are craving for the right experience. They don't want that experience to be any different from, you know, interacting with a WhatsApp or a Facebook, uh, you know, as Kunal rightly pointed out. So I think people's expectations have changed in terms of what they expect out of, out of an Indian service provider. It's, uh, it has to be truly world class. Seven zero, and that's across all categories. Um, across all categories. So I think about a, you know about a year ago, you know when it started out, people were apprehensive about you know should I buy a, a DSLR camera or a laptop, and those were top of mind things for us. That what kind of products would sell well uh, on on an app? Is it just books? Is it just uh, low value items? But that is not even a question that's raised on the floor you know these days. So it's 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 pretty much kind of a non-starter, so you know, that, that gap has just completely vanished. Kunal, you said it's... For us, it's only 90% and, and, and uh, like, like look, we are wondering, uh, should we be at all there on desktop uh, or, or keep investing at all on desktop? And, and I think this question, if companies have not faced, they will face in the next six months. We as a category uh, observed this earlier because recharge is like in the Maslow's hierarchy, is the bottom uh, over there, and I think it kind of goes up to air tickets. It takes time to get there, uh, but uh, in our view, uh, the consumers are already there. 
they are preferring to do a lot of things on their smartphone. It has become truly for the first time we have a personal computer. Personal computer so far was not personal at our houses, right? But this is truly a personal device. And I think, therefore, you will see a very different kind of behavior emerging from that. And uh, I, I will not be surprised that, I mean, I, I'm sure Flipkart is probably gunning for 90% already uh, in a year's time, if possible. 100%. 100%. Answer. I think, uh, you know, two years back, uh, we decided, you know, we we're going to shift focus completely to mobile. And the reason was because within six months, we'd seen uh, mobile penetration uh, on our side going up from 5% of traffic to 15, 18% of traffic. And we said, look, you know, if that's the bet we have to take, let's just build for that. So we actually went with the unbundled strategy. We launched multiple mobile apps. Uh, and, and, and today, you know, we've got, uh, in terms of transaction, actually, it's, it's, it's a little different across verticals. So flights is the uncles. So, you know, it, people who've grown up on legacy desktop devices, still finding it hard to give up on that. So 20 to 30 percent uh, of transactions have moved to mobile, even though 50 to 60 percent of searches have already moved. Uh, so, so it seems people are looking on mobile and then going and booking on desktop in their offices or, um, and, and that behavior might take more time to change. But when I look at hotels, where, you know, we have been historically severely underpenetrated both on the consumer side and on the hotel side in terms of technology. And now, you know, on both sides with mobile, with tablet, uh, with, uh, you know, easier access, uh, what we are seeing is for us 80% plus of our hotel searches are ha actually happening on mobile. It's also a very last minute use case. A lot of people in India look for hotels only when they land at a place or when they leave for that place. Um, and and uh, I think for buses and trains, it's already closer to uh, 75, 80% as well. So if I were to say, you know, in one year's time, we can gun it, apart from flights, we can gun for everything 100% mobile in one year time. Um, and it, it sort of makes sense as well because uh, three years out, you know, the uncles and the legacy users that we're talking about are going to become a minuscule minority, right? So 68 million people took a flight last year in India. It's the same 68 million people who were using the internet three years ago, right? And that number is not going to grow as fast. But 8 billion Indians <coughs> took a train last year. I, I mean, 8 billion trips last year. So almost everybody took a train journey last year, right? And multiple times, so to say. And, and most of those people are now going to have a smartphone. So guess what? You know, I mean, uh, I, I think IRCTC should be focusing and investing <laughs> on their. <laughs> they, they just launched a great desktop site. But I think they should right now be focusing and investing a lot more in their uh, app, which doesn't allow Tatkal booking right now, by the way. But uh, I, I think that's where the future lies. Is payments one of the big issues why people still hesitate to use uh, mobile? So I think uh, you know, for an e-commerce company like Flipkart, uh, you know, that that is a bit of an advantage that we have. You know, cash on delivery that helps people kind of you know get over the initial hurdle. Uh, Reliability of kind of transactions, you know, transactions failure kind of continue to be high just because of, you know, the high latency uh, networks we have reliability. Uh, but I think so that's, you know, as a company what we focus on the last year is like stay away, stayed away from like, you know, you, so the platform itself has a lot to offer and you can do a lot of really cool features. You can actually also do a lot of gimmicky stuff. But most of our technology and development efforts have been towards making the experience really good. Uh, for people who are on 2G or high latency networks, because if, if you want to have a pan India presence, if you want to, you know, really, you know, be yeah, be able to deliver to people, you know, who are outside of the metro cities, who have those nine to five jobs, you have broadband, you know, networks, uh, your experience needs to kind of hold up. Um, and, and payments is, uh, again, one of the areas where, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, as debit card penetration in, improves in India, you know, we are ready for that. But as an industry, I think having cash on delivery is an advantage right now. How about you? We don't have the choice of right. cash on delivery in our category. Uh, and and uh, what we have noticed is that mobile has improved, but is significantly <coughs> poor compared to desktop in terms of success rates. And it's a function of the networks and, and latencies, and, and also just the form factor. We are still seeing banks having these desktop uncle looking pages to put your passwords, right? And, and uh, hopefully that will change in the next thing. Uh, we are seeing some uh, plays where people are taking the wallet approach to solve that problem. The problem is loading the money still goes to the same problem. So uh, our belief is that uh, as an Indian, I, I don't like putting money in two pockets, right? I would rather prefer it in one pocket and kind of play from that and get interest on one. Uh, 
And, and the, the next thing that is going to really help is that what we have noticed is when a consumer tries something on mobile and has one successful payment, he does not stop. He continues. So that first hurdle of trial, right? And in fact, even for the uncles who are still booking the flights uh, online, I can tell you one thing. I was one of that, and I would search offline, uh, book online, uh, sorry, book on desktop. Or, uh, and, and after I did one trial, it was four trials because I missed one flight and I had to mm. do that. It's, it was the fastest experience ever, and I have not moved back to desktop because it's a trial that requires, and this is exactly the thing, when earlier we used to book train tickets at railway platforms and IRCTC happened. Compared to that, IRCTC looks like a much magical score compared to booking a ticket in the station. Now, one may say that IRCTC has not evolved, but it's still a better option than going to this platform. Yeah, that's, sorry, go ahead. I was just, so Kunal raised like, you know, great point about that, that, that first experience. So I still remember, you know, like two, maybe three years ago when I first experienced like Uber, uh, the first hurdle was I'll have to enter my credit card and like, you know, they, they really exploited the form factor and the features that, you know, mobile phone provides really well where you just take a picture of your card and everything gets like swallowed and your card's ready to use. I mean, you know, that itself is such a great enabler. So those are, that, that's the kind of thinking that the market needs to bring, you know, how do we get people over that initial hurdle of, you know, accepting, you know, you know cards. And I guess that's one of the reasons we are seeing such an uptick in the number of wallets as well, right? Because it's an easy way, especially on the mobile, uh, just to link your wallet and get a transaction done. But I have a view on wallets though. I mean, fundamentally we haven't solved any problem. The only problem we've solved is that you don't need to go through the painful two-step process each time. You can do it once a month or w once in three months and add money to your wallet. So I think <coughs> fundamentally the problem is that of either you do COD or in our industry for hotels, you do pay at hotel, which means you actually are not taking any money right now and you're just taking a booking confirmation. And then of course you have no shows and things like that, and, uh, which you have to take care of and in their case returns, etc. But I, I think uh, where the telcos missed an opportunity already, which was you know having their expansive network of outlets, they could have you know built their own wallets and taken money on you know through their outlets. And uh, I, I think now with the RBI opening it up and you know private players are going to do this uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. So what excites me is the possibility that, uh, you know, there could be potentially one dominant wallet in India 12 to 18 months from now. Uh, you know, there might even be multiple and, and, and people can just walk to their nearest store. I mean, if you know what companies like Echo are doing, you know, so there can be somebody in your neighborhood who can add money to your wallet for you. You know, so somebody you could add on your app who can actually add money on the wallet for you, uh, even if you are not the person who has. So example, you know, let's say you have some, someone working at your home, uh, they don't even have a bank account, uh, but you know, they, they, they can establish a social relationship with you. What if you can pay on their behalf and they pay you cash, you can be your, their cash on delivery, right? Uh, and, and there are companies which are innovating on these fronts, and I, and I think somewhere we have to fundamentally uh, also change regulation, right? So there is still a lot of regulatory problem. I mean, I don't know why we need OTP on a 300 rupee transaction, on a 100 rupee transaction. I mean, it's sort of, uh, for a country where adoption of payments is so low, right? So at least for a few years, RBI will, or you know, the regulation, regulators will have to take a call uh, in order to ease this process and, and, and make things, uh, you know, make that uptake rate faster. So awesome not to put you on the spot, but uh, is this, important enough for Flipkart to start their own wallet service? Uh, so, you know, we've, we've made some efforts in that path. I think, again, you know, like most other companies, uh, we, we again run into, you know, the same regulatory kind of environment, you know, you know, getting, you know, the right licenses and, you know, making sure that uh, everything stays consistent for a few years. So I think the challenge for a lot of people is if they invest a lot of time, resources, you know, building this out, but then, you know, if the policies change, then th that, you know, it, it's a downer, especially in a, in a very competitive uh, market. So it's something that we, we keep kind of, you know, observing and seeing, you know, how it plays out. But like, like most other companies, it's going to be very important for us, you know, how, the, how this evolves. I think also th that was a great point in terms of, uh, you know, reducing the hurdle rate for OTPs on all that 100 rupees, 200 rupees. I think a lot of companies will be willing to take that risk that, okay, if, you know, there, are, there is fraud, there is failure, you know, you know, whatever that is, you know, they would factor that into their business plan that this is the risk capital that they need to put, put aside, you know, for, for all of these things. 
Um, so I think a little, little kind of you know forward thinking uh, in that direction would go a long way. I actually have a point to make uh, in addition to what you just said. Uh, first of all, uh, if I have a way to do a DND, if I do not want spam, I should have a DND or a equivalent to do my OTP or not. I should, as a user, know that if I want OTP or not. If I don't want it, I should be allowed to do that. That's first. Second, in terms of uh, trust versus convenience, I can tell you one thing. As Indians, we are still very much in the trust department. Okay? We still check our restaurant bills for errors, even if it's computers that come 20 years ago to see if anything extra has been built. And, and, and that psyche is not changing anytime soon. And therefore, our trust on the old banks and, and the banks that have been there is, is, is very important for us. Right? Uh, convenience, I mean, let's look at, look, look at a simple example. You go abroad, you'll never see people waiting in the queue at airport before the plane has come. In India, we queue up like two mile queue before the plane has come and we have an allocated seat already. So convenience is not, is a very subjective thing in India. And we should understand that from an India psyche perspective. All right, good point. Uh, I'll pause here if, to take any questions if there are any. I see a few hands to be, have a mic. You can just go um, from the front to the back. Hello. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this question, this question is to Mawsam. Uh, uh, we take an example. So if I have to buy a hard drive from Flipkart, I, on, on, the, on the mobile application, I quickly do one te terabyte, 3.0 USB, and I get all the filters done in. Uh, 4,000 to 5,000 is my budget, so I find a, a particular piece and I get it. But if I have to buy a T-shirt, there are 1,700 <laughs> options from which I have to pick. So in that case, probably I would prefer a desktop uh, experience compared to a mobile because I can see only two t-shirts at a time and then I have to scroll a lot. So do you see that for some categories, m-commerce certainly makes sense, but some may not move to m-commerce so easily? So that's, that's a great question. It was based on a conversation we were having like, you know, before the panel started. To me, like, if you'd asked me a year and a half ago, I, I would have been very skeptical that, you know, how would fashion do well on an, on an app? It, it, is, it is the fastest growing uh, category for us uh, on mobile. Most of the you know, fashion growth has been actually you know, coming from mobile. Even if you look at you know, you know, our group company, Mintra, if you look at the, their, their transaction numbers on fashion are, on mobile are just you know, through the roof. Uh, so a few things. I think w what has happened is that uh, sometimes you know, when you are inundated with a lot of choices, you, know, you find you know, it hard to select something. I think that, is, that actually works in fashion's favor where if you have things like, you know, so Flipkart, the, the app has guided search, you know, uh, Mintra has, you know, you know, very good filtering system that helps people narrow things down very well. And as the, as you, as you will see in the next, like, you know, three to six months, you know, as, as things progress, you'll see a lot more things coming into like en enable and aid fashion even more. One thing is uh, uh, something called visual search where you, you'll be able to take uh, a picture of, you know, something in, in a catalog or a magazine and, and be able to find similar products, uh, you know, that, that you may be interested in. Or you may like a particular product and then you know, you'll have visual search within the app that find me similar items. If I'm interested in a yellow shirt by Polo but I don't want to pay the price point, I want to look at similar products. Then you, you just say visual search based on the image. And these things are, a lot of, lot of these things are you know, no longer kind of you know, far out that they'll come out like, in a few years and they're you know, lab prototypes. You'll see them coming out very soon by a lot of players. So you know, very exciting times for, for, for fashion in general. So I think Two things. One was like price point, right? Will people buy expensive things? Will people buy certain categories? And that is no longer a question. And maybe it was a question for people who come from the desktop world, you know, as Kunal points out, you know, or the, or the uncles. Uh, if you're living in, so, uh, uh, you know, as, as part of my job, I, I travel a lot around the country and meet a lot of people. Uh, so if you go to a city like Amritsar, people are like completely locked out of high-end fashion. You know, it's not that they're not fashion conscious, that they don't, they don't want access to the latest fashion. But what, what they see on TV doesn't come to their city like, you know, nine, 12 months out, you know, it will, it will come to maybe the local mall or the stores that they visit. So I think it is democratizing the whole fashion industry, you know, really, really fast. So that's a big enabler for it. All right, Hello. we'll uh, go back that way and then come back. I, I have a question. Uh, this is Ripu Daman from Akamai Technologies. And going back to the first theme of the discussion where you discussed mobile taking over desktops, right? Uh, and most of you mentioned that most of the transactions are coming from mobile. Uh, and Kunal, uh, I mean, alluded to it in a way, saying that uh, the success rate is not that high. So my question is, on mobile devices, we all know the conversion rates are not really that high when you compare to desktop. So what is it that you're doing with respect to 
resources or technology or user experience to really bridge that gap? And how do you see proceeding? Uh, because everyone's going mobile. We all have mobile phones. So your thoughts? So uh, uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, anything and everything that can make that journey happen. And, and that answer is right from the kind of products we design in terms of keeping it light, making it, making sure that the memory consumption of that is on the lowest possible side. In terms of networks, uh, usually we are in a recharge product, which means he's probably out of 3G and he's on a 2G or on a Wi-Fi or whatever to make his transaction happen. Uh, what, what we are, or, or he's traveling most of the times. So he's probably in a choppy network. So what we are doing is doing a lot of stuff on the technology to make sure that the sessions are, are keeping up to the level of making sure the transaction happens and, and thinking. Uh, assuming that the transaction has got the poorest network uh, and still have to make it work. Uh, in terms of technology, I mean, anything and everything that we can implement, we are uh, open to that right now, taking a lot of startups uh, help on, on building some interesting stuff around that. Uh, and it's surprising that a uh, lot of these ideas are actually coming from smaller towns where they, the only test environment they have is poor network, right? And, 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 and interesting products are coming from there. Let me ask you something on that. Um, leave aside your corporate hats, but as individuals, you've been talking a lot about technology, new search technologies, making it easier for users. Do you think we as an industry are at a point where we are going to leapfrog the US in terms of mobile technologies for commerce? Because there it's still largely a non-mobile play. I mean, it's, it's changing, obviously, but so, and in the mo in the e-commerce world, clearly the U.S. is way ahead in terms of uh, technologies, platforms, and so on. Do you think this this time we can potentially leapfrog? I can answer that. I think we feel fairly, fairly confident that not only U.S. I think even China. So, see, U.S. and China they have very high kind of broadband penetration. Even China. So, if you look at like Alibaba's SEC filings, you know when they filed. They were doing about 17 or 18 percent of their transactions from 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 mobile commerce, you know. And most Indian players would laugh at that number right now. So I think the future, the, the definition of you know you know the mobile economy is actually you know going to be written in India. Very exciting times here. In terms of uh, just the infra issue, I think uh, if if that improves and, and investments are made, uh, there was a time when telcos invested in infra and data was not happening, and now data is happening and uh, we, we all have 3G, which does not work like 3G. Uh, uh, I think those things will automatically, like I can guarantee you in our business, we can see a 2x growth just happening by networks working the way they should, right? Uh, just today, uh, as of now, right? And, and uh, a lot of the stuff we are building is for, as usual, in every, like everything in India, we're building for infra coming later kind of a thing, which is never a great thing to do, but yeah, we, we, are, we kind of, Pushing. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we Hi. have a mic there. Hi. Uh, my name is Prashant. I'm from a payments company called Suvida. Uh, my, I don't have a question, but I wanted to share uh, something that I learned. Uh, I think when we're talking about success, payment success rate on mobile, uh, what is hindering it is the two-factor authentication or the OTP. Uh, I read that RBI is already moving in the right direction. I think they are coming up with a limit up to which OTP will not be required or verified by visa will not be required. Uh, and uh, I uh, think the once it's few weeks that uh, in few weeks time we will have that regulation out there, and that will I think boost uh, the success rate for um, mobile payments. Thank you. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first is, uh, we are talking about MCOM. Is it, uh, how is the app penetration versus the mobile site penetration different? Uh, are we seeing any major differences in terms of transactions? Or if you can share some thoughts on it. And the second question is, uh, do we see most of the tier 3 and tier 4 cities coming on the mobile site than on the app? Uh, I think no longer true for us. I think you know mobile site used to be the gateway for a lot of people earlier because you know people. I think these days the people who are likely to shop or buy anything online will <coughs> will be on Facebook and WhatsApp. So I think people's familiarity and comfort level with apps is is much much higher than you know you know you know, we would think to believe. So I think uh, 
it's not been issued. The experience is just so much more better. Conversions are so much better. Overall engagement is so much better. It's it's a much more personalized one-on-one -on -one interaction with, between the customer and the company. So I think uh, apps is pretty much the end. That inflection, so there was an inflection point for between desktop to mobile, and then now it's app, app, apps to mobile side. It's, it's already happened for a lot of players. Uh, uh, just to add, a uh, uh, lot of players will obviously focus on app more than web for the reason that the investment the user makes to install the app and try it, right, uh, is a big hurdle that he has crossed and he usually will have a much higher retention, therefore, after that, right? And therefore, you will see a lot of companies do running app festivals or, or app campaigns because they want to encourage a trial and therefore have a better cohort after that. That's first point. Second point is about uh, just the amount of impressions of your brand that gets created because all of us are now also staring at our phones right now and scrolling and we look at our screens so often that the brand recall is also kind of built. So there's an interesting thing that web cannot provide uh, uh, for us as brands to kind of get the mind share uh, just by being there as an asset uh, or as an icon on the app, on the phone. Just want to add one thing that mobile web is not dead. It's not going to be dead anytime soon, right? So still for us, that's one of the biggest channel for mobile app downloads, right? Because the, and that's a free channel, right? So I as long as you can uh, still get people who are typing in stuff on Google and landing on your mobile web, uh, remember that that's a great way of actually pulling them into your app. Also, for some content-related stuff, you don't really need the app. So if somebody is looking for a very simple piece of content, uh, in our case, you know, travel inspiration content, or you know, uh, if there's something we shared on Facebook and you know somebody wants to read that. You don't have to necessarily take him inside your app in order to do that, right? So I, I think mobile web will continue to have uh, some space, uh, especially with how aggressively Google is integrating the Chrome experience back into the Android, uh, uh, you know, and with Google now and all that. So I think it's here to stay. Is there still a debate between HTML5 and app? <laughs> uh, I think HTML5 is, is a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> I think it was the topic of 2014. Yeah. <laughs> no debate. All right, good. Uh, you had a question there. Uh, I would just like to know the demographics. Like, you know, if I'm a, a vertical concentrated on, for me, it's kitchen. So, how many, how many, you know, how many housewives or how many women uh, traffic could I expect, or you know, what are the demographics of? The traffic that is driving uh, that is driving the website, the uh, the mobile store. We are seeing 30% of our transactions happen from uh, women. Uh, we have seen that uh, from a, a transaction behavior uh, when it comes to actually purchasing something, there's a skew on the gender so far. Uh, it used to be much higher earlier, uh, but I'm I'm pretty confident that from a browsing perspective to a COD <coughs> perspective, uh, uh, a Wi-Fi enabled and, and a and a huge amount of housewife audience is already uh, there. And I think you can take a lot of learning from the gaming companies. You'll see a lot of their audience is actually housewives. And, and maybe you should talk to some of the gaming companies to learn more about it. Yep, we have a question there. Does the accessibility of the mobile application? Uh, hold on a minute. Use the mic, please. So we've actually seen a lot of adoption of uh, of transactions now happening through mobile apps. So does it also bring about a lot of customer stickiness uh, uh, for businesses? I think I already did answer that uh, apps uh, stick more than any other form of, uh, any, any other mobile web or desktop web. Absolutely, I mean the thing is, the biggest endorsement a brand can give for your product is give them, give you like, you know, home screen real estate. You know, every, you know, in India, I think that you, you uh, the average person has about like 12 or 14 apps on their phone. So you know, if if you're able to you know find that presence, you know, I think it's it's a huge win. Thank you. From a sorry, I thought there was a question there. Um, from a pure technical point of view, how do you guys keep up with the hundreds of models of phones and operating systems and so on? In the e-commerce world or the or the desktop world, it was a little easier because they were just you know the variations were limited. How do you guys do that? Is it all internal? Do you outsource? Is there an opportunity for a startup here? 
I, I think for us, it's 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 all internal. I think we have a legacy of you know doing things in house. But I think that's a huge opportunity, especially from uh, like you know, if, if if I were to tell somebody to start a company right now, is you know create create a farm, we just test out you know apps on like in a whole bunch of devices because it's a huge burden for a lot of companies. That is something that a lot of companies would happily outsource. That we are about to release the app, can you give me like you know in, in you know 24 hours, give me a turnaround on how it's doing on all devices. You know that definitely there's a business to be had there. So you've got a customer, you've got an investor. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Hands up. Okay, you have a question there. Hello. Uh, after going to mobile commerce, um, is your marketing expense come down? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it, it, it enables just a much more meaningful dialogue. So I think that's the whole, uh, you know, spray and pray philosophy goes out of the window where you spend like millions of dollars on TV and hoping you, right, you know, hit the right audience and re-engage the customers. I, you know, that's one is acquisition and then one is re-engagement. So re-engagement costs definitely, you know, go down. But compared to e-commerce, it's probably higher, right, initially. Yes, initial the, the cost of acquisition. Uh, I won't say higher. It's just different. I think you know you have to play differently. You need to you know build different kinds of relationships. You need to think about distribution much more deeply. Uh, you know as opposed to you know doing kind of you know mass media TV. So I think uh, you know the nature of acquisition changes, if not the cost. All right. Um, yeah, we have a question back there. Hello. Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of conversation happening around the fact that the space on a personal uh, on a personal mobile the space window space is just crashing with so many apps. There's an app for a plumber, app for apparel, app for electronics, app for everything that you can think of. And there's only limit to how much one can have on your on their screen. So is there any uh, insider information or any view that you have on how that world is that browsing of apps, how that will evolve? And is there going to be like a interconnectivity and that seamless, you know, sort of transfer between apps or through a common browser app? So my, my view on uh, what what kind of apps will evolve, I think uh, the apps we store are the ones we use more frequently. If you notice the apps that we have uh, and the, the screens that they are on the first screen, second screen, third screen, is the, 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 the metric is the frequency of use of that. Right? If you create an app for once in two years kind of a product, uh, it's a very fairly, I have seen a company showcasing uh, a builder creating an app and showcasing it on billboards. I mean, I, I sometimes wonder, somebody must be a really smart company to sell this idea to that builder, but uh, the, the idea is that those kind of things are usually uh, a bad decision and, and they will always have a bad taste of saying that, hey, app does not work. And, and they don't know what they're saying. Uh, but, but when it comes to uh, creating a common thing and, and or let's say a deep linking kind of thing or a common browser kind of a thing. Uh, I think we are a little bit, uh, maybe six to 12 months away from that. A lot of stuff is still, uh, I can tell you one thing, Flipkart, Freecharge, Paytm, Vixigo, uh, any, any large company that is doing anything in mobile, they don't know a lot of stuff. I can guarantee that part. I think the whole thing is evolving. I think to, to me, the notification centers will become much more powerful, you know, moving forward where, you know, you'll get rich notifications, you, you know, companies already sending rich notifications, but they'll, you, they'll be more action oriented where if you, you know, if you're talking about something, you should be able to take action then and there about it. For example, you know, recharge, you know, just click the button from the notification center or, you know, buy a Motorola phone right from the notification center. So I think the ecosystem will evolve, but I think people will, you know, for the foreseeable future, have a limited number of apps. So I think you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's a great vindication of your brand if somebody you know installs uh, installs the app and it keeps it on on their device. Because every every vertical will have like one or two go-to apps for people. So but you see that the mobile site is going to be more powerful in that case than the app itself. Just being able to browse through online. I mean, what kind of traffic do you see between we, app we and mobile Honestly, we live in world of site? cycles. I think as soon as the app cycle becomes too prominent, the web cycle will kick in, and when web cycle becomes, app kicks in. I think it's a it's a cycle we go through where we want to have everything and then let go of everything and then create an API of everything, and so it's a cycle that we go through. Right now, we are at the start of the app cycle. We have to still get better experience to consumers, right? We want to make sure that we load a lot of stuff beforehand that the consumer have uh, at least a seamless experience on the app until they get to the web kind of part of it. So. Uh, this is going to happen. I don't see it happening very soon. 
I think we are just at the start of the app journey. A lot of stuff is to be discovered. I think uh, the prerequisite for that is, uh, you know, 4G that works like 4G. Because if that happens, then your mobile website might actually work as good as your app. Because a, a lot of the uh, data download that it saves is, I mean, that's where the difference in user experience comes from, right? You can't wait for three seconds for a page to load. People are less patient than that. Uh, and just to your point on, there is a finite number of apps people want to keep on the phone. But remember that for every vertical or for every use case that is used more than once a month, they will have one app on the phone for it at least. They might even have multiple. And as long as you're the best app in the category on product, on content, on speed, on usability, that will be your app. right? So there, there is going to be an uh, increase in the number of apps people keep on their phones also because the size of the phone memory is also going up. All right, I think we have time for one last question. Yeah. Yes, hi. Uh, interested to hear your thoughts on Alibaba picking Paytm as the first uh, investment in India versus a more traditional uh, horizontal marketplace player. Uh, they are our friends, so I can answer that question. Uh, uh, which one of the two? All of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Check it. Uh, if they. It's a, it's a great time for East and West making India a center of all digital growth and innovation, right? And we should be all happy that all forces uh, from West and East are you now uh, camping in India and making this country move forward. And uh, we can only be thankful when some of these developments happen because as a country, we'll benefit a lot from this. And, and uh, these moves are a great sign for, it's clearly, India is now being declared. Thankfully, we were uh, fortunately, unfortunately, always called uh, twins of China, where we were nothing. We have nothing in common with them except the population bit, bit of it, right? Uh, but because we were perceived that way, right? I think a lot of forces have descended because winning India is critical for a lot of people who have uh, not been able to uh, make East or West happen. It's a nice place to uh, be there. I think we should be just very happy and and. Uh, Hopefully, more and more investors from different places will come to this country to fight their war. It is great for us. No, I'm very happy too. But I guess my question is more: um, Why Paytm for Alibaba and not a Snap deal? Like, how do you think Alibaba was thinking when I think they? It's the price decision? one has to pay to start the thing. I mean, uh, it's the table stakes that one wants to start with. One does not start straight away with the big hand on poker. So it's it's, it's a question of that. But it doesn't matter. It's too early to declare that that is the move. It's not their last investment, I'm, I'm guessing. So you don't, you don't think it was mobile first, which is why they did it? I guess that's what I was really trying to. I think so too. I mean, it's a story that everybody buys and sells. After, I mean, it's, it's after all storytelling that we all are in business of, right? So uh, we have to figure out that uh, there has to be something that should appeal to our potential investors. Whatever the reason, we are very happy they made the investment. So it's a portfolio company. Timing is everything that, in life. <laughs> With that, thank you very much. Uh, we're at the end of our session. Thank you, audience. Thank you.